it's creating better business and I would like to see all businesses operating at B Corp standard. That's kind of my, my goal. We should be really clear on our sourcing and transparency. People should be paid the right amount of money, whichever country they, um, they live in. And we should be looking at fair trade. Fair trade should be standard. Why are things not fair trade? Hello and welcome to the Ocean Impact Podcast. I'm your host, Tim Silverwood. Our guest on the podcast today is Julie Mathers, who is the founder and the CEO of Flora and Fauna, who are Australia's biggest online eco-retailer and I believe the world's largest vegan online retailer. Now, Julie really does shine out as this incredible entrepreneur who from a career rich in experience in retail and e-commerce, recognized the need and the opportunity uh, for a platform really focused on products that do good. And so what we've seen with Julie's journey since launching Flora and Fauna in 2014 to now in 2021 is purely extraordinary. Uh, we talk about the challenges in establishing the business, in scaling it, and now in this last phase of her journey, deciding to sell the company. So a bit of a theme here around how to scale and sell your business whilst maintaining values. Um, she's a leading rep of B Corps. The business has been a B Corp since 2017 and just been recertified in 2021. And I think you're gonna get a real sense of what it takes to not only design a business with values deeply embedded and with impact embedded, but then how to navigate that scaling from being one or two people to having 47 staff and $17 million in annual turnover, but still keeping those integral values at the core of what you do. So I'm sure you'll enjoy this episode. It's a real pep talk for founders and entrepreneurs out there who want to be a leading business person like Julie, um, but maybe don't know quite how to get there. Julie's got lots of tips and advice. If you like the podcast, please uh, give us a review, give us some of those stars and share it around with your community. Thanks as always for listening to the Ocean Impact Podcast. Very excited to have on the Ocean Impact podcast today, Julie Mathers, who is the founder and CEO of Flora and Fauna. And I think when I'm framing this conversation today, I'm, I'm thinking of all those people out there who tune into the Ocean Impact podcast and imagine themselves as creating a purpose-driven business that creates a huge impact on the world. And so what better guest to be speaking to than you, Julie? How are you today? Oh, thanks, Tim. Thank you so much for having me on. I am so excited. When you asked me to be on this podcast, I was like, yes, come on, because <laughs> I, I have utter respect for what you have done and are doing now. And um, so I'm just really excited to be talking to you today and having a, having a bit of a chat about all things that we, we should and could be doing. <laughs> well, that respect is, uh, is most certainly mutual. Um, we were recounting a little bit before we pressed record. <laughs> Uh, on the origins of when we first met, when we were really quite uh, at that grassroots level, building our respective uh, movements. And it's nice to sort of get here in 2021 and reflect back on just how much progress we've made. Oh, yeah, definitely. I know, they're the good times. <laughs> so this idea of embedding purpose into a business and having that work, I mean, it does feel like that's something of the holy grail for so many entrepreneurs out there. So maybe you wouldn't mind starting with a bit of a recounting of why you have the values that you've embedded into flora and fauna and how you've gone about that purpose being so integrated for so long throughout the journey of the business. Yeah, it's, it is, it's, it's something I, being a purpose-led business is, Oh, I, I, I kind of talk to people about it and I go, what you can't do, what you absolutely can't do is, is give your purpose and your mission and your values to the marketing team and go, come up with a purpose and mission, put it on a PowerPoint and put it in a drawer. That's not what to do. <laughs> so when 
I started FNF, I knew that I wanted, what I knew at the time, this was in 2014, I knew that I wanted to create a place where you could buy cruelty-free makeup and skincare. So it wasn't tested on animals. Um, and it was just a bit kinder. And that's where I started. That was kind of my little purpose back in 2014. And I think it's really, the, the thing I've, I've really learned over the years is that I have just grown into my purpose. And FNF has grown into its purpose as we have figured out who we are. And I think it's really important that from day one, you don't necessarily know everything. And sometimes you've just got to get started. And from that little purpose or mission, I won't even call it a purpose, from that sort of guideline that I had of going, well, I'm going to create a cruelty free beauty store, which had 500 products and 30 brands and blah, blah, blah. We have really just lent in over the years and gone who are we what what are our values and what is our purpose after growing from there and we didn't so our purpose is to help everyone make better choices and we have eight values under that and I'll name a few being kind being authentic being bold I think it's a really important one to do what we need to do um, wowing our customers that's a really important one as well 100% vegan and cruelty free others as well so and we have when we knew more about who we were once we'd got started once I figured out where this business was going where our movement was going and what we were about then I went okay this is actually the, the time to really define who we are and that wasn't until about I think we didn't really define our purpose properly. I know exactly when we did it because I was having a conversation. I was at a dinner with someone really senior from Facebook. <laughs> and it was just, sometimes you get these opportunities. And it was like this retail, it was quite funny. It was this retail dinner. And there's loads of retailers there. And they all decided to just go and talk to each other and, you know, just go and drink loads and da da da. And I went, hang on a minute. There's an amazing person in this room from Facebook. And he's all about brand defining brands. So I went and plonked myself next to him and had a conversation over dinner for about two hours about Flora and Fauna. And he really helped me define our purpose. He really helped me. He really helped me think about it. And so I, I'm such a big believer in taking opportunities and, 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 and networking and, and really understanding all that stuff. Anyway, but it was, I think that would have been about probably early 2018 when we when we really said okay this is who we are and we sort of knew who we were, were before that but we couldn't really verbalize it um it was like oh yeah you know what we're a kind of vegan store and then we're trying to do good and we're like Wah! we kind of knew what we were trying to do but we really needed to hone in on that and since we've been able to do that and really go, we're here to help everyone make better choices. These are our values. This is what we live by. In our office slash warehouse, because it's all on one level, we're all intermixed with each other. We have a billboard size, um, well, bill, we have a billboard. And on that billboard is our purpose and values. And we refer to them every single day. So with every decision that we talk about and make, we talk about it in reference to values. So I was talking to our buyer yesterday and she was looking at a product and oh, I had something in it. I can't even remember what it was now. It had something in it. And I said, no, we would never stock that. It doesn't meet our values. And I just use, I use them and talk about them all the time. And I think it has to end up just running through your DNA. Now, the values of flora and fauna are the values of me. So... I look at that billboard and I go, yep, that's me. That is absolutely me. And that, that I think is, is great when you're a small business and you're a founder and because I think that's typically what happens anyway. But as a result, it's in my DNA. It's, it's just part of who I am. And so I talk about it all the time, but it is just who I am as a person. And therefore that just flows through flora and fauna. And that's how we've really, really just, just 
really, really honed in on what our purpose is and being able to drive so much change because we are that purpose led. Um, but it takes time. It takes time to get there. I think it's, you can't, you need to talk to your customers. You need to talk to your team. You need to talk to your community. And half the time they're going to tell you what they expect and you've got to learn and listen. And then it sort of, at some point it comes together and you go, aha, I got it. <laughs> so at that time in 2018, when you had that sort of sense like, okay, they're, they're my values. It's a bit of my purpose, but perhaps it was time to sort of position it in a new way, either for the customers or for team or for the stakeholders, mm. for the, the businesses that you, um, that you stock. Like, how would you sort of pinpoint why that slight change in 2018 was so successful and, and, and set you on that next phase of your, of your journey? So I think it really, up until that point, we kind of, we talked about the fact that we were, we're 100% vegan, we're cruelty free, we're ethical. They're words, but they won't, don't really define where we're trying to get to. And when we said, we're here to help everyone make better choices, that really helped define what we're trying to do. It's not, we're here to help only the people who can afford it, who live in the Eastern suburbs, make better choices. That's not, that's not what we're about. It was like, no, we're here to help everyone make better choices. So that helps us say, okay, we need to have affordable products, accessible products. We need to offer, we'd already offered it by that point anyway. We're already, we've been doing recycling for four years now, but we were already doing recycling. But maybe we need to branch out and do more streams of recycling. We can't just be doing beauty. What what else can we do? We're here to um at checkout with us, we ship everything minimal packaging, but we also give some customers choice around that as well. And it, it's really gone through every part of our business because it's broad enough that it covers everything we do and it isn't just words. So whether we look at, we, we have our super with Australian Ethical Super, we bank with Beyond Bank and that is helping our team make better choices with their super. That's helping everyone make better choices with Beyond Bank. Um, and those are some of the things that coming out of coming out of our purpose, it, it has driven every single decision we've made in our business because it's not just what customers see, because that's just the surface. It's it's the big iceberg below it. And it's the powerhouse that runs our business. Since that time, it's been great because we've really, I've found since then, we've really gone, we've been laser focused on purpose. So um, I had my baby Woody in 2019, Woody has Down syndrome. I learned a lot about disability. And I just went, we need to be better at this as a business. So everyone needs to be better about this. And I was like, well, 18% of Australians live with a disability. So we are going to have more than 18%. The target was we're going to have 18% of our employees who live with a disability. Well, we're now at 20%. Right. And it's, it, it, for me, it has just helped us get a laser sharp focus. But it can't be just what customers see. It has to be through everything. And what's great about it is that our team hold us accountable. So if they see something, they are in, they, they do not have a problem <laughs> with, with saying, hang on, we should, we could think of a better way there. Um, even down to, we write handwritten notes on uh, boxes on all of our orders. We've done it since day one. God, we've written about six, 700,000 or something now. We've just writ written an enormous number. And one of the team said to me, Julie, we're just using like, Biro, just like pens. And I was like, yeah, it's really bad, isn't it? I was like, God, we haven't really thought about that. And he said, well, I've come up with this. He goes, and this is great because so, I'm a big folk. I'm, I'm completely focused on solution, not problem. Don't give me a problem. Give me a solution. And, um, and he said, well, I, I found this um, organization and they make pens made from paper. Now you've still got plastic elements in them, but they're much better. Um, and their pens made from paper. And I've sent an inquiry and this is the pricing. I was like, 
here's my credit card, go and get a whole bunch and distribute them out to the team. And this, that, that is when, you know, that's when I get very warm and fuzzy inside because it is not just me or Tom, my husband, driving it. It's everyone. It's everyone driving it. And this is when you recruit based on values. It's just, it's through every, every facet of your business. I get very passionate about that. <laughs> I love it. So I'm pretty sure that everyone who's tuning into the podcast so far is sitting there and they get it. They know that yeah. embedding the values and making it purpose-driven, it's, it's what we need in 2021 and beyond. It's what we've needed for a long time. But of course, you need a business model uh, to work. So why don't we go and talk a little bit about the business of Flora and Fauna? Um, you know, tell us sort of what it is, what it's... What it's, um, what's so unique about it, why it's been successful, and maybe even a little bit of a, a backstory as to why you were the person to, to, to build this. That's it. Yeah, so, ooh, so Flora and Fauna, um, we're Australia's largest eco store. So, it's, it, it depends, so it depends on who I talk to in term, terms of what I go in with first. So actually, most of the time, I, I say we're a platform for purpose. And that's how I like to describe us. And then it often takes me about 10 minutes to get onto what we actually do. <laughs> um, kind of like today's chat. So <laughs> yeah, exactly. I know. It's just like, you know, I, and so I really do describe us as a platform for purpose. It's a platform for us to do really good stuff like recycling, carbon offsetting, and to just lead the way and drive change and, and all that good stuff. What we do on a day-to-day -day basis, how we stay alive <laughs> is... Um, is we're an eco store. We we have ten thousand plus products, three hundred forty brands. I counted them the other day. It's three hundred forty brands, and so we're multi brand retailer. We are based in North Rocks in New South Wales. Uh, so it's about um, yeah forty minutes north of Sydney, something like that. And um, we're online, but we also have a store there as well. Love the store because we have loads of refill options in the store which our customers love. I was standing in the store the other day, three customers came in, one after the other, and they just wanted refill. And it's brilliant. It was just brilliant seeing that. So, so the store gives us the option to do things that we can't necessarily do online, um, or it doesn't make, we could, but it really doesn't make sense um, economically or environmentally by completely shunting things back and forward with refills. But, um, and, uh, blah, 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 blah. yeah started in 2014 and we 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 sell a lot of different products we, we're 100 percent vegan and cruelty free we stock everything at north rock so we don't do drop shipping or anything like that this comes back to our values i firmly believe that our customers on average buy about five products per purchase so they do not need to get five different boxes because that's not living our values they get one box from us wrapped um in a in a plastic free manner from us wrapped consciously all that sort of stuff um and why i suppose my yeah my that gives us enough about us doesn't it that enough about us? and then yeah. i'll go go into me a little bit um so i have worked uh, for retail in for 30 years now if i count from when i started in a bakery when i was at school and i started there on a saturday when my dad said to me about the age of 15 you need to go and get a job <laughs> <laughs> and um and I was like oh okay so and that's what I love about my parents they've given me a huge a really important um work ethic that that we have I, I work very hard and it's thanks to mum and dad and anyway I went to go go and work in this bakers and since then I've just always worked in retail and I absolutely love retail um I did engineering at uni mostly because I also really love science and um so I love all the work that, that you're doing and um because that gets my that gets my geek on a little bit too so um did engineering at uni and actually in my um gosh I think it was my uh, second year at uni uh, I, I went and did a placement and my placement and this was back in 96 I think 95 96 I went off to go and build solar cookers in Spain so I because everyone was going and working on oh for all the big schlumberger and oil and all that kind of stuff and I was just like no, I don't want to do that I want to go and do something really meaningful so I went to live on this alt <laughs> I went to live on this effectively it was a commune but anyway it was an alternative technology site 
and everything was in completely off grid in Andalusia, in Spain, and they uh, grew their own veggies, completely vegan as well, which is brilliant. They grew their own veggies, they had their own irrigation system. I built walls and I was there. We had solar cookers, everything was solar powered. It was just amazing. And that's, but it's always been in me. So I've always just had this desire to, to, to sort of just make a difference, I guess. And, and that's, it's been in me since day one. I think about some of the things that I used to do at school. And I was always just a little bit um, huge, hugely entrepreneurial, actually, um, but also a desire to make a difference. And I think that entrepreneurial aspect is very important because I, I do remember when I, was a, when I was a kid at school, I would go in and around Easter time, I'd take a whole bunch of Easter eggs and I'd create a raffle. And it was like one in 10 raffle tickets won this Easter egg. But if you didn't get one in 10, then you didn't. Anyway, raised heaps of money for charity during it. <laughs> And it was just, it was just that kind of, I've always had that sort of mindset of what could we do? How can we push the boundaries? And, and yeah, massive, massive passion in terms of making change. And, and that's just really led into to what I'm, I'm doing. And, it, and I, I think flora fauna really led from my passion for animal welfare. So I am vegan. I am very passionate about, well, I'm just very driven actually about, about, creating a better planet for animals and humans and I think we should be doing we're, we're not we're just not there yet so I was like okay and when you're buying a lipstick I'm there going come on no animals should be harmed in the making of a lipstick that's nuts like that is that is absolutely crazy and that was what started me getting onto flora and fauna it was actually I was shopping for for a lipstick and I just went, you know what? I don't know how this is made. I don't know what the ingredients are. It's really unclear. Beauty industry is pretty terrible. So I just went, all right, I'm going to go and create a website where everything is quality free. And that's what I did. So that was kind of the catalyst, if you like, for me getting onto this journey. But it was very much driven by my values. Love that. So we've got an insight into the catalyst. Um, so the moment was obviously around 2014. You, you just obviously had some pretty high flying roles with the likes of Coles and Woolworths. Yeah. You know, experience and skills in retail were at an all time high. So did, you obviously went into this with eyes wide open. You knew that this stepping off that ledge and starting this was going to be your journey for the next 10 plus years, which obviously it has yeah. been. Yeah, hundred percent. I sort of yeah, you're right because I completely forgot to talk about the thirty years that I've been working in retail, and I've worked all over the world. I've worked in Japan, I've worked in Europe, the UK, here in Oz for the last twelve years. I've had lots and lots of big companies, mostly big actually, some little ones, but I've also worked in private equity, management consulting, all retail focused. So huge, huge experience across every possible retail facet you could think about, and. I knew that I just had a, I had a desire to do something. And I've had that desire since I lived in the UK from about the 2007. And I just couldn't find my purpose. I hadn't figured out what it was yet. I knew I was really unfulfilled. And I was happy doing my roles, but it wasn't my, it wasn't going to ultimately fulfill me. And I, I always want to be able to look back when I'm 90, 100, 70, whatever it is, when I'm about to meet my maker. And I want to look back and go, yep, I haven't left a stone unturned. I don't want to look back and go, oh, if only, if only I'd have done that. I wish I'd done that. I don't want to do that. So, but I hadn't, but I also didn't want to go into something likely. Um, and I wanted to make sure that whatever I was going into was going to be the right thing for me. And I'd sort of over the years kind of toyed with doing different things and started different things. And they just weren't really right. And they hadn't got gone very far at all. So it wasn't anything that needed to concern myself with. But but this, but when when I came up with the idea of Flora and Fauna, that was like it was instantly right in my head. I just went, that is it. That is it. And it was clear, I mean, I was walking away from a very nice, comfortable salary at Woolies and going, you know what? 
I am going to go to a salary of zero <laughs> because I knew when starting it, it was it was very um, measured and calculated in terms of I knew I wouldn't be able to pay myself for at least two to three years because every cent that we generated had to be reinvested into the business for growth. So it was an informed choice, but it was it was it was it was measured as well. And we had to make sure that we were okay personally, financially to do that. So there's a lot of eating beans. What how I figured how I developed through that process though was really realize just realizing how much how much you don't need. Um and so I am a massive minimalist. My clothes are way too old. As my mother-in-law keeps telling me, I need to get some new shorts. I'm going, they're fine. They're just a bit threadbare. They're fine. <laughs> but I think when you have limited funds to spend, you become you become pretty frugal and you just realize what is and what isn't important. And And I'm not big on things at all. So that was kind of a bit of a personal journey for me as well when starting Flora and Fauna. But it has been really good. What's been really, really good is being able to use all of my retail experience. And that has been invaluable to starting this business because I've seen a lot of businesses start and fail. And there are many things that, many decisions I've made that had I not had my retail experience, I maybe wouldn't have made. Um, and then therefore could have caused, caused fairly major issues for us. So, yes, and that yeah. certainly is represented by the incredible breadth of accolades and awards that you've achieved through your retail prowess and, and e-commerce. So, um, you know, congratulations on that. I think that really is, is, is obviously very key to the success of Flora and Fauna. Yeah, yeah, it, it is. It is. And thank you, because it's... Um, you know, we, we have made decisions. One of the things that we've done, I think a lot of people expect us to be a business because we're founder owned, we're founder led um, until very soon. We've just been had our own money to reinvest. But the thing that we've done the whole way along and I advise, I, I kind of ask any, any business to think about this. We've really made sure that we've developed this ridiculously efficient business. I am a very big fan of talking about purpose and profit and how they they must balance and work together. There was a, when, um, I think it was two two weeks ago, two weeks ago, there was a company, you probably probably know them, Tim, Hey Tiger, mm. um, chocolate. Mm. Um, and they've been very focused on fair trade chocolate and, um, was, and they closed their doors. Um, and they put a note on their website, which talks about the fact that they couldn't quite get that profit piece right. They got the purpose piece pretty damn pat, but they couldn't get the profit piece, piece right. And I'm a big, 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 big believer that you've got to balance the two because some of the things that we do, our recycling scheme costs us a small fortune <laughs> and we have slowly turned into a recycling plant <laughs> um, and it costs us a fortune. So we have to be very, very efficient as a business, very lean. We've got to have the right systems, the right tools. We put... Um, Two, two years ago, we put a new website in. We went to this big platform website. Um, but it was the right thing to do because it builds us, it, it helps us scale. It cost us a fortune to do it, but it was the right business decision to do to make sure that we are the best performing company we can be so that we can, we can do purpose and profit. And I think that that is, for me, is the key to get right. You've got to be, I'm hugely focused on on our return that we get from our advertising uh, I look at it daily it's we're massively focused on cash flow all of all of the stuff that you need to be as a business you've just got to be almost focused on it even more so that because you you are accepting that some of your profit you are giving up to purpose-driven activity yeah is there something to talk about there in the sense that 
you did start this on your own back on your own you know and then tom mm. came straight in your husband i mean yeah. you were living off beans you were frugal <laughs> did that act as a big driver of those efficiencies or is it it was before that you know your engineering mindset you were always going to do things with efficiency with and you're in existing roles as well yeah it, it, it it's kind of us it's how we operate but i do think there's something around when we started the thing i did was I just went, right, we're not going to be able to afford to have to employ anyone. Like, we, we can't afford to employ anyone. We, for the first, first day, oh, God, probably first year. In the first year, I think we turned over 70000 First part year, we turned over $70,000. That's not enough to pay anyone because <laughs> um, that's just revenue. That's not even profit. So, um, so we I suppose we're both quite lucky I did engineering at uni so kind of have a little bit of that mind or I think I've lost it to be honest to to cater towards my creative mind far more but Tom is an engineer so he's an engineer by trade he did engineering at uni as well but then he actually became an engineer and when I started the business there was a point about a month or two months in when we'd launched and he said to me goes do you want me to help you with the finances yep and I've never looked back (laughs) thankfully and and then it was just a natural progression and because of his skills he's really looked after the operations and he is Mr process Mr efficiency but we have both been absolutely hands on so i said we're not going to be able to afford a graphic designer so i'm going to take myself on a 200 dollar photoshop course so i can do enough to 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 deliver something and to deliver something, and it, and it looked terrible, right? But it was enough to get us to a point where we could afford to bring on a contract graphic designer. And and I think this is the key. I, I was speaking to someone recently and they said, no, I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna employ someone to do that. I'm gonna employ someone to do that. They've not even started their business yet. And I'm looking at it going, oh no. Because <laughs> for a short while you do, unless you've got funding, you do need to get your hands dirty and and be prepared to do everything. What that also adds is that we have done every job. So we know exactly um, how efficient we can be and how long things take. And we know that we don't need to create meetings after meetings after meetings. We, We have a, I was talking to my team this morning and I said, we need to have a sense of urgency. Because I have a sense of urgency. And if things don't get done, I'm going to jump in. That's just who I am. Because we put the customer first always. So you, so this, yeah, there's something around that. But it's just naturally in us as people that's really helped us, I think. So maybe let's bring everyone up to speed with with where we stand at the time of this recording in, in June 2021. You just mentioned, um, you know, first year revenues were coming in around 70,000. <laughs> They're probably more like 17 million this year. <laughs> You've gone from you and Tom to 47 yeah. staff. And I guess the big news is you, you've recently sold the company to, to BWX Group. How has this happened in, in seven years? What a remarkable journey. I know, I know. Sometimes it feels like 70, though. I, I swear I've aged 70 in the last seven. I, you don't I swear look I, it. Oh, my gosh. I, you know what? If I looked at my average um, sleep hours, I, I don't want to look at it. It'd be terrible. <laughs> yeah, it's, it, it is, I am very driven, very driven. And to the point where I'm probably a nightmare to work for, for at times, because, and I'm, I'm really self-aware as well. I know what I'm good at, but I also know, I know what I'm like. So, um, and I'm kind of just going, well, I think to, to do what you do, you have to be driven, You've got to be driven. So, and when I started Flora and Fauna, I said, look, you know, we, we, we need to make this big. We need to make it big. And, and you don't necessarily know what that will look like. I, I do actually, I did do a bit of market sizing in 2014 and I went, oh, I think this could be a $6 million business. I'd be really happy with that. <laughs> and, and, and I thought that's, and I, I genuinely thought that's where it would cap out. But that was back in 2014 and, I was probably looking at, you know, different, different times, seven years ago. Anyway, yeah, this year we're going to turn over 17 mil, provided the rest of, you know, this month holds up. And um, 
we started looking, we got to the point where we knew to do what we needed to do next. We needed help because we had delivered this business through cash flow and profits. That's what we'd done. And, um, and it was very much putting every cent back into the business. And, we, and that was the reason we've managed to grow it. It's being a lean business. It's putting every cent back into this business. And it's also being really commercial as well and thinking really smartly about where you're spending your, your money. So we don't, I believe every dollar that's spent in that business needs to earn its place. And, and so very, very focused on that, that, that sort of stuff. But we got to the point where we went, my gosh, at some point, we're going to need a much bigger warehouse. At some point, we need to do a lot more marketing. We want to do more own brand. All of that stuff needs investment. And we couldn't do it. So we'd got to the point where it's like, oh, we're either going to sort of plateau a little bit because that's all we can afford to do. Or we need to take make this bigger and we need to go out for, for investment. So we, we'd actually started having chats about it probably two or three years ago and that was just people approaching us so this was just investors approaching us one of the things that we have done which I think has been really helpful actually is we've entered awards and things like the Telstra Business Awards the Deloitte Tech Class 50 that stuff all gets you noticed and I think that has been really really helpful on our journey because coming out of those you people start calling you I think immediately after, I can't, I think it was Deloitte Tech Class 50 actually, we got called by quite a few people in terms of, oh, let's come and have a chat. And you just start having those conversations. And then it starts you, you thinking. So it wasn't something that we said one day, right, we must go and do this. It had been in our minds for a while. And, and then it was around August, September last year, we, we started working with Deloitte. And we just went, oh, look, if we're gonna do this, let's do this properly and let's you go and help us with this plus also we have a we have a business to run so we can't really be completely consumed by this either and and that's when we started that journey and it, it is an interesting journey because we were very we're very values led we're purpose led and when you're kind of opening yourself up here and i i remember talking to cat at deloitte and going whoever we work with. And at the time we were only looking for private equity. So we only approached private equity and we were just looking for funding. Um, and I said to her, I said, whoever we work with, their values have to align because I'm not gonna be able to do it otherwise. And I, I can't have someone coming in and saying to us, we're not gonna do the recycling scheme anymore because it doesn't, because it's a number on a, you know, on a p and I'm like, no, that doesn't, that doesn't work for me. So someone has to, be able to work with us to do more about purpose and grow. And that's a challenge when you're looking for investment. Um, but that's when we started that, that process. And we met lots of really great people actually. And, um, and some, some, it was really, it, it, it was a bit polarizing actually some pe some investors and you just went nope I walked away and just went nope don't want to work with them just don't get us because all they talked about was the numbers and I'm like they don't even know what we do they don't even like you know it's, it comes back down to the emotive stuff they don't care um so so it's very clear on some of those calls. everything of course it was during COVID so everything was done on Zoom which in some ways made it a bit easier but um and then some who we really really aligned with and they just got us and and then um and then kind of really as a bit of a left field thing bwx came to the party and said hang on what about us <laughs> and um and that's when and that's when we started talking and for anyone who doesn't know bwx is a big listed company i think they've got about half a billion um, market cap so pretty sizable they operate the brands Sukin, which is one probably lots of people have heard of, and Alu Naturals. And they have a couple of other brands and also Nourish Life. And their, their focus is around natural wellness and bringing, bringing natural 
to more people. That's what their focus is. Values wise, very aligned in terms of big focus on people. I think they ran, I, I just saw this in the presentation yesterday, actually, one of the top places to work or something like that. So, and from all the people I've met, really lovely too. Anyway, we went through a process with them, which is not something I want to do again. Just those processes in general are just exhausting. <laughs> but we went through a process with them and they um, wanted us to join the family. So, and and when I say wanted us to join the family, want me to join the family, want Tom to join the family, the BWX family, and want the team. So they love what we do. And that was really important to us. We weren't in, I was not intending to sell the whole thing. That was not what I was intending to do. But then once I'd spoken to them, it was like, actually, this is a really good partnership. And they can really help us take this to a bigger, a much, much bigger level. And that for me personally was very attractive. And I get to lead something bigger. And, and I am being someone who's not fussed by stuff, but I'm very motivated by change and by driving things. I just went, I can really get behind this. I think if they had said to us, we wanna buy you, but you can leave on day one, we wouldn't have done it. It would have been, no, I would never have forgiven myself for that. Um, and that would have not been the right thing. And to be quite frank, no amount of money can make up for that in my eyes. So, but being part of something bigger, being able to drive something bigger is really, really exciting. So, so yeah, so as of, so we've, we've signed an agreement to complete <laughs> all the legal stuff. And in early July, that's when we actually complete with with them and um, and then go and be part, part, part of BWX. Amazing. And I just, yeah. you know, I love in so many ways, you know, it's so obvious in talking to you, this, this purpose mindset, your focus and how much you care about impact. But, you know, you've also just worked incredibly hard for the last seven years and that idea of being able to take a break and you know get a get some um <laughs> some cash and just go and chill out but like no you're looking at the next big thing you're not just looking <laughs> about how fnf can do its greatest work you're now looking at others within the um the broader bwx group and it, it's just a really yeah. impressive trait of yours julie yeah i think i just work it's down to mum and dad so i uh, they I've grown up with both parents working seven days a week. They've both worked manual jobs. My dad, he's 74. He still works seven days a week. It's really, he's a painter and decorator. He, he, he's such a hard work ethic. And my mum, when I was growing up, she was actually a milkman. When they used to, so milk, when you used to, milk woman, she was the only milk woman, when you used to go and driver, deliver milk to people's doors, the ultimate, the, the first bit of e-commerce ever actually was my mum. And, um, and, and she used to get up, I think, about two. And it was my granddad's business. She just went to help out for a week and then stayed there for about 25 years. But she used to get up about two in the morning. She would go and do that. She would get back about midday. My dad would take myself and my sister to school. When she got back, she would do housework. She'd pick us up from school. She'd cook, cook, cook our dinner. And then at some point around 10 o'clock, she'd pass out for about four hours and then start again. And that's that that's the mentality I suppose she isn't healthy at all but that's what I've grown up with that's what I've known and I have a and I do do put a lot of my drive and work ethic down to them because it's it's um but I also think just when you're passionate about something when you're passionate about something like I don't want to have a break I, think, I probably do need a break actually I think I do need one I could, I could probably do a couple of days somewhere but but I also just want to get on with the next thing and, and see what else we can do. Because I just look at it and just go, well, our planet's not taking a break. So I probably shouldn't take one either, you know, and we need to just crack on with this as quickly as we can. And the ability to, to drive change at, at this level is really, is really cool and exciting. It really is. Yeah. But sort of back, I guess, to, you know, this... You, you must be able to reflect, and again, to all those accolades and awards. I mean, you have met 
you must have met a definition of your own vision of success. And so now you're stepping off again to kind of embark on a on almost a, a step up now with with this this next phase of the journey. Do you have an, an another iteration of your vision of success? Like, do you do you have that as a north star, or you just keep going while you've still got fuel in the tank? Yeah, so um, probably a combination of both, actually. Um, for me, I'm just whilst I'm loving it, whilst I'm driven by passion and purpose, and I am enabled and given autonomy to do it I, as I said before I know myself really well what I need is autonomy what I am not good at is when there are barriers that come in my way um, so that was very important in terms of picking BWX to make sure that that is going to be enabled for me um, and but I do I just think I think I suppose your your goals change over the years. If I thought back to 2014, what our goal was, it was about, oh, I kind of want to create a really cool place to shop that's fully free. What we've actually delivered is that, and so much more, so much more. I didn't think back then we'd be doing the recycling we're doing, we'd be doing all the carbon offsetting we're doing, we'd, we'd be doing all that sort of stuff. And I think this is the thing. Sometimes you can set yourself goals but they move over the years and they have to because we're changing a society and so on and so forth. So I'm very excited about being part of a, of a business which can give us firepower. So we can go and figure out what that next milestone is and then the next one after that and then the next one after that. But they are all around driving change and creating better business. For me, that is really key. We have to create better business because business is so integral to the health of our planet. And so by being, we've been really noisy at Flora and Fauna for a retailer of our size, which is not very big, really. We've been really noisy about what we do. Um, but that has really helped drive some change. I look at it and I go, cool, we're being noisy again. And I've sat in meetings where people go, well, that green stuff you do, Julie, this is like retail meetings and stuff, that green stuff you do, and I'll be like, and then the next, a year later, they go, so we've we've launched some sustainability efforts, you know, and it's, I think, I think you just have to keep pushing, but sometimes those goalposts will move and change, and they'll become different goalposts, um, but you've got to, you've got to keep on going, and, and ultimately, ultimately for me, it's creating better business. And I would like to see all businesses operating at B Corp standard. That's kind of my, my goal. We should be really clear on our sourcing and transparency. People should be paid the right amount of money, whichever country they, um, they live in. And we should be looking at fair trade. Fair trade should be standard. Why are things not fair trade? So, so all businesses, I believe, should get to that B Corp standard, in which case then there is no standard and we've met our, you know, that's great. That's really good. So that that's kind of, I suppose, where my, my ultimate big lofty goals are. And very much where my core values lie as well and what is inherently embedded into OIO. It's this pragmatic realisation that... Um, Capitalism is the platform that the world functions on. And unfortunately, there's been some real negative impacts of, mm. of bad capitalism. But what if we do embrace the power of business to be what it should have always been about, which is genuinely solving problems and creating solutions? So if we can minimise all those negative externalities of it and just focus on the good then suddenly we've got a really beautiful chance of making this biosphere thrive it's it's yeah. so simple it's so simple isn't it but do you find you're getting do you get pushback do you get where where do you see the barriers with what what you're doing i think because we focus so much on the startups and the early stage mm. ventures where it's so driven by values and purpose and you know, incremental improvements there can then start to really forecast out to where they can go and what they can become. But, you know, the barriers I suppose we have is that 
being such a purpose-led business and having a desire to be supported partially by commercial entities that want to align and to genuinely support us as a non-profit on our mission, it's, um, that's probably the hard one. Like, you know, we, we have focused a lot of our attention on the B Corp community here in Australia and New Zealand and how could we find adequate commercial sponsorship funds mm. to power our machine but when you just maybe look at that purpose market, the B Corp community, you're really cutting off the bigger pie. And so I guess we feel, and this is, I think we spoke about this before the conversation started today, there is some organisations in our ecosystem who are starting to partner with the likes of Coca-Cola. We saw the Ocean Cleanup and the Seabin Project make recent announcements about that. So is there a bit of an inevitability here that, we do need to not sacrifice our values by any means because I think there is great opportunity around bigger entities and, and us working together, but just go and play in the bear pit a little bit more when we'd probably yeah. rather not have to just yet. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's so true, isn't it? Because you, you just imagine if someone really, really, really purpose-driven and ethical went to go and run Coke. Like what they what they could do the power that you know the, the impact they could have if if that was um really run by I don't know who runs it I'm sure they're lovely but uh, you know but if 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 that was through their DNA and and we have to get there we've got I just look at it and I go we have no choice this is a matter of time and I think from what we can see, I look at it, look at it from yeah seven years ago when I started FNF to now seven years ago we really weren't talking about plastic that much. Um, we weren't talking. We certainly weren't talking about B Corp or sourcing or um, diversity or, or or any of any of that kind of stuff. We we were we've come a long way in seven years, and. I got someone sent me a gift yesterday from a, another from from Mecca Mecca Cosmetics, and there um, and it's quite funny because we, we um, Tom who my husband who runs the operations we got the box anyway the box said on the box it said on the box they use the green wrap which is what we use as well which is great and it said on the box made from blah blah recycled materials and da 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 and I'm like this is great this is you wouldn't have seen that a few years ago I don't I don't know when they changed but. You'd have probably seen a glossy box. Now then Tom looked at it and he went, they're still using glue. <laughs> and he, so he, he went Eyes to, wide he, open, Tom. Eyes wide open. Yeah. And he starts in, in looking at it, looking at the tape and all that kind of stuff. And he went, oh, yeah, that's that. And I'm like, that's hilarious. Um, but mm. we've seen strides being made. And, and it has to be driven by, by these big businesses as well. Um, you know, Unilever, I love them all over them. I'm not sure. <laughs> you know, they bought a lot of purpose driven businesses. Now, are they doing brilliant things with them? I'm not sure. But but they've tried to go into that realm a little bit. And there's clearly a lot they need to do. But they're kind of they're doing they're doing they're starting to do some stuff because they've got to. They've got no choice. That's so, it. It really I, is a case yeah. now. And there's been some stuff in the press recently around um, you know, some of the boards of some of the largest petrochemical companies in the world now starting to get representation from, from people that would not have been represented on those boards in recent years, being, you know, firm yeah. believers in, in climate change and the need to adapt. So there is really, uh, in some industries, it is adapt and innovate or perish. And, um, yeah. you know, there's a couple of things, even just in the some of the media that came out from the recent sale um, you know, BWX representative talking about, well, there's 65% of consumers out there. They want to be more conscious consumers, but only 26% are acting on that. So there you go. There's the market share. There's the $28 billion global market for green household products. So it's all there. The evidence is there that this is where everyone is heading. And so you adapt and innovate or you get left behind. Yeah, I, I absolutely. It's, you 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 just don't have a choice and those those that aren't yeah and we've seen companies close um we've seen them shut down because they just well there's probably various reasons actually but 
um, we will see more over the year where where they aren't making the right decisions. And ultimately, people, when they have choice, and we need to give them choice, which is why we have our purpose, help everyone make better choices. Um, once they have choice, they will make, and it's comparable price-wise and everything else, they'll make those better choices. So, you know, you, you, those companies that have kind of stuck their, dug their heels in and said, no, 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 we're not going to change. They will be left behind. Um, so, yeah, it's kind of, um, I think it's, I think it's exciting. I'm like super excited about, about the next step and, and what we can achieve here with some real firepower behind us. And, um, and, and yeah, the, the, and also, also what's really cool for me too, lots of people like BWX have been so welcoming so far. And it's not just the leadership team, it's people connecting with me on LinkedIn. It could be the safety manager, it could be, you know, marketing coordinator, office coordinator, whatever. And they're just going really excited. Here's a bit about me, blah, 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 blah. And it's getting lots of people on this journey too. And, and, and really building a strong culture around this. And that, that has been key to Flora and Fauna, has been building this culture. Because when we started, it was Tom and myself, and that's easy for us to have that culture. But when you've got 47 people, you, you need them to be thinking in a similar vein as well. So you've got to have that, got to have that culture. Well, Julie, I've uh, so enjoyed watching the journey from the sidelines a little bit, loved our little interactions <laughs> over the years. And, and I'm as fired up as you to see how you go in this next uh, iteration of your career. So we're going to get close to wrapping it up, but um, if there's anything that you really thought you wanted to touch on today or talk about, I'll give you, you know, final words and, um, and then maybe tell people where they can sort of go to learn more about you and about F&F. &F. Cool, 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 cool. Um, oh, my final words. I think probably if I think about one thing that's really just helped me in my journey, because I can really speak, speaking from experience is the best, best way to do it. It's really knowing who I personally have been um, along the way and being very... I don't like the word ruthless so much, but it, it, it's probably appropriate. It's unforgiving in some ways about this is who I am and this is what I'm here to do. And there are some things that I'll compromise on, but not much. <laughs> and I've, but I've really learned a lot about myself over the last seven years. And I think where we've got to is a lot because I've gone, okay, this is who I am. And I'm happy to be that person and I will go and do more with that person and be and be slightly unforgiving about that's who I am. So I'd just say really know who you are. And with that as well, know who you know, what your brand is as well and go and drive change. Um, OK, how can you come find us? So our website's blondefauna.com.au. I'm on LinkedIn. I'm quite active on LinkedIn, actually. Um, I'm always posting things to annoy everyone. So, so that's just Julie, Julie Mathers on LinkedIn, but it would be fairly easy to find. And um, Julie Mathers on Instagram, Flora and Fauna AU on Instagram, Flora and Fauna AU on Facebook. We're doing lots of cool eco hacks at the moment, which are very cool that the team are coming up with. So yeah, come and come and say hello. We've got live chat as well. Just literally come and say hello. <laughs> I love it. Love the way you and the team communicate. You've got such a friendly, friendly face to the brand and to yourself. So go and check them out. Um, Julie, it's been an absolute pleasure. I'm sure our listeners are going to have picked up so much from today's conversation. So we, we thank you and we look forward to talking to you again soon. Oh, thanks, Tim. I've absolutely loved it. Absolutely loved it. So thank you for having me on. <laughs>